Hi guys, Anthony Turnham here, and today I'm going to share with you some photo editing tips for getting the most out of your landscape photography with Luminar AI. Now I really love landscape photography and I really love the process of actually photo editing inside the computer and I will often spend hours inside Photoshop just perfecting landscape photos. But one of the primary goals of Luminar AI is to actually help you produce creative work much, much quicker than you can in traditional photo editors. So in this video, I'm going to share with you my workflow for editing a landscape photo, but hopefully some of the tools and techniques that I'm sharing with you here will be relevant for many types of photography genres. So I hope you'll get something out of it. So let's dive in and have a look. So when you first open up Luminar AI, you're within the catalog. You can come to your folders section here and you merely need to point Luminar AI to where all your photos are contained and it will load in the photo structure for you. And I'm going to come to my landscapes and the photo we will work on today is going to be this image here. This is the Church of the Good Shepherd at Lake Tekapo in New Zealand and it's quite an iconic church with the mountains in the background and the lake here. Now before I do any editing what I like to do is assess my image and think to myself what do I want to actually achieve through the photo editing process. And in this instance, I can see that we're very dark on the main landmass here and the church itself. So I really want to bring the attention of the viewer to the church itself, perhaps bring a little more detail into the mountains behind. We were shooting this on a cold, misty morning, but the fog had started to kind of lift. So I'm wondering whether with Luminar's AI, we can actually introduce some mist and fog, just to add a little more in that was there probably about five, 10 minutes earlier. But while I was walking around to get this shot, it just started to clear. So I missed that kind of atmospheric haze that I was hoping for. There's a fair bit of detail in the clouds that we could also try and enhance and just bring out a little more detail. And I also want to keep the cold feeling that we've got to this photo as well. So this blue color palette, I want to uh, certainly keep and maybe enhance. So Luminar itself, if we jump into templates, will actually make some suggestions of a good place to start. So you might want to jump into easy landscapes and just see what some of these look like. So we've got clean light, we've got noir scape for black and white. Forest stream is also a nice one. And if you want to have a look at your before and after, you can just toggle the eyeball switch. And so we're certainly adding some nice impact with something like forest stream, but we're not achieving the goals that I want to do. So while this might be a good starting point, it's not where we actually want to take the photo. So we could actually come into the editing section and start to create a more bespoke image that we're in control of. So rather than start with this template, I'm gonna come down here and just go reset adjustments. So we're back to the beginning again, and let's click on the edit tab here. And currently you can see that we've got our history of what we were just applying and playing with before. So that history is always accessible to you via this bottom right hand corner here, but we wanna start making adjustments. I always like to try and frame my photos as best I can in camera, but if you feel that it's not quite right, you have Composition AI here, and we can just click that, and Luminar is going to make its own suggestion. You can see the church falling on like the third point of the grid here, and it's not really what I'm after, but um, it's, it's a nice idea from Luminar. If you feel that the uh, horizon line isn't quite straight, we can click the Perspective button here, and that will just make an adjustment. If you're not sure whether it's worked or not, a little tip is to do what I did there, which is drag the grid so that you can actually line it up with the side of a building or the horizontal with the actual uh, horizon line, just to check that it's done a good job. But uh, I've found that it's really good at, at doing that automatically for you. So if we move on to the light section here, you can see that that composition AI crop is applied and now we can start making adjustments to our photo. So within this panel, we've got all the basic adjustments that you might know if you're familiar with Lightroom, for example. So we can play with our exposure. We might want to brighten things up slightly. Definitely want to increase the shadows because that's gonna help to bring detail through into this foreground area here. We may wanna drop our highlights down just so that we're not losing detail through the clouds and potentially we can play with smart contrast. So while taking it to the right increases contrast, if you take it to the left, you can actually bring out a little bit more detail in some of the areas. 
But if you push it too far to the left, just be mindful because you can start to create a bit of a nasty HDR look. But I'm going to bring this just close to the center, but I will drop that to the left a little. So you can see here in our profile, we've actually got Luminar's default profile applied. What I would normally do is actually change that to one that actually matches your camera. So for example, as soon as I click this, uh, we can get a more punchy landscape look uh, that's specific to my D850 or some monochromes or we could go for just a camera standard and I think a camera standard option is a good place to start. Now we can jump into the Enhance AI and this tool Accent AI it's just been an absolute game changer for Luminar since I introduced it. Uh, it's a really great tool because it can control so many things at once. You can look at localized contrast, global contrast, saturation and exposure. It's a real great one slider fix. So I normally play around a little bit with that and just see if I want to add a little bit in and more often than not I find a little goes a long way. Structure AI, I certainly want to add structure to this image but particularly I want to localize that around the church and that's where Luminar's masking, local masking will come in. So we might come back and actually do that with local masking but perhaps we want to add just a little bit just to the whole image. I encourage you just to grab the slider and actually crank that all the way to 100 just so you get a real sense of what each effect is doing to your image and then you can just bring it down and just ease it to a place you're a little bit more comfortable with. So if we turn that off with the toggle switch there and then back on we can just see it's just giving it a little helping hand. So while we're in the blue color scheme here, what I might do is just jump back into our light section and actually push the color temperature more towards blue. And let's play with the tint just a little bit. Maybe that's a little too much. And from here, I don't want it to be too blue. So what I'm gonna do is now just reduce that saturation. So we've actually harmonized the blue right through. So we've got a very blue toned image now. And whereas I normally prefer warmer toned images because uh, they're a lot more inviting, because this was a cold frosty morning, I think that works quite nicely. Within your own images, if you actually want to change the color of individual colors, what you can do is just grab hold of like the blue, for example, if we wanted it to be more cyan, push it to the left or more ready purple, push it to the right. Uh, so that's a nice way to control colors. You can also uh, come into the saturation and decrease that saturation of that color or increase it. Uh, we can also decrease the luminance as well. So basically that's your brightness. We can make it darker or brighter depending what you're after. At any point during the editing process, it's always nice just to come up to Luminar's before and after tools just to see how you're heading with things. So if we look at our split between the left-hand side where we've got the very dark church, uh, we've got some kind of brownie tones in there. On the right, we've brightened that up and we've got a more harmonized blue color palette going on. We've also taken some of that orangey toning out of the clouds as well, which is quite nice. So if we're happy with that, we can push on. Next tab's always a lot of fun. Let's jump into the creative tab and let's have a look what we can do here. I'm happy with the sky, so don't we need to worry about any sky swaps or adding anything to the sky. Uh, but I would like to have a look at atmosphere because this is where we're going to be able to introduce the uh, foggy effect. So if I crank this up all the way to 100, you can see that we've got fog in the sky and it's just starting to wrap around the building here very intelligently. And if we play with the depth, we can bring it further forward as well. But in this case, I don't want the fog. What I would like to use is layered fog. And we can play with the depth and push that quite far forward. because so we want that just wrapping over the top of the land mass here. And now we can just reduce the amount to a point where we feel it's nicely introduced, but it's still subtle. And then we can look at our before and our after by toggling that switch there. And if we're happy, we can move on. The next tool I'd like to have a look at applying is dramatic. And if we push that all the way to the right, you can see that it kind of washes out the image a little bit, but it does introduce contrast. So what I'm thinking is if you look at the actual land mass around here, as we push that to the right, you start to see more detail um, and things get a little more interesting around here. Uh, whereas the clouds, I feel, get too washed out and bleached out, as does the sky. So what we can do is actually bring a bit of that in. Uh, let's let's go for 100 just for now and we can see what we're doing and we can actually paint this in with a mask and using the bracket keys I can increase the size of the brush and we can have our opacity just around 50 just for now we'll do a bit of a rough and ready painting job over here and then maybe a little smidge of the water as well just to brighten up that little bit where it just touches the edge there so now we can 
turn that off and on and we've certainly got a little bit more impact going on in this area here. Now, if there are areas that you don't like, you can now come in and erase those, and that's what I'm gonna do here, just around the roof line. I just feel like uh, we're getting a little bit of haloing going on around there, so we'll just take that away a little bit from the roof itself, and perhaps even just ease it off towards the edge of this here. So now let's have a look at our before and after. I like that and now what we're going to do is just decrease that amount so that we can just feather that in just ever so slightly just tickle it into the image before and after yep it's a subtle improvement i like it let's close that down and let's jump into mystical and see if we can't just add a little bit of a nice soft glow to this if push that to 100 again you see what's going on there so we can just ease that back so i feel like i'm done within the creative panel uh, the portrait section obviously we can ignore that and the pro section here i don't feel like i really want to do anything i could do a little bit of dodging and burning just to guide the viewer's eye to the brighter areas and things but what i want to do is actually use local masking and i'm going to increase a little bit of interest around the church here and also just darken off the sky and potentially the water as well well, just a little bit around the bottom area here just so that our attention goes more to that center part of the image where the church and the mountains are so let's add a mask with a basic adjustment here and now we can come in and start playing with this what we'll do is just increase the ai structure and that's going to be what we apply to the church here and we may just boost the shadows ever so slightly just so it brightens that area too let's look at brightening it just a little bit with the exposure there and if we turn it off and on, we get a feel for what we're actually going to be painting in. It's quite a strong effect at the moment, but what I intend to do is just paint that down, paint it in with a low opacity and just gently, gently introduce this in. So you can see this pink area that I'm painting that represents the mask and the closer that gets to pure red, the more effect this adjustment mask is going to have. And so I might want to just do a little bit more just localized over the church here. And if we turn that off and on, we can see that we've really brought a lot of interest and pop to this area here. I'm thinking we may have overdone it a little bit in the rest of the foreground. So no problem. We'll just grab the eraser and just erase here. So as I alluded to earlier, Luminar is very much designed to make things simple and easy and you don't need to know how to use these tools and you don't need to dive into this. Personally, I just like doing that. That's that's my thing. I get a lot of enjoyment from it. But the fact that you can uh, kind of flies in the face of a lot of comments that people have left saying, oh, Luminar's killed creativity. Uh, the AI is going to do everything for you. And that's just so far from the truth. You can totally take control of your image processing uh, just as you always could. It's just the tools are there to help you realize your vision quicker than before, which is great. So in this instance, what I'm looking at is the sky here. So if I turn this off and on, you can just see that I've darkened the sky, uh, reduced the saturation just ever so slightly. Uh, we could paint this in with this uh, paintbrush or a much quicker way to do this is to actually select the gradient mask. And now I can actually just draw that effect down from the top of the frame there. So if we look uh, before, and after we get a beautifully smooth transition there. And now I can add to that mask by painting if I want. So we can do a combination of the radial mask painting, um, sorry, gradient mask, not radial mask. And we can then remove it if we feel like we've applied it too much. If we want to increase the opacity, we can do. And that is how you use local masking. So if I collapse that down, you can see that we've got our two adjustments. The first one, which applied uh, solely to the church in the foreground here, because we, that's where we painted it in. And that just increased that texture and structure within that part of the frame. And then the one above, which was uh, to control the brightness of the sky. So we're darkening things down just so that our eye comes to the brighter part now of the image around here. And if at any point you feel like you want to make adjustments right back at the beginning, just jump back because I'm feeling the overall look of the image is a little dark. So we can still grab the exposure and just boost that up ever so slightly. And now I think I'm happy with that. We can look at our before and our after. And you can see that we've literally uh, in <laughs> introduced all this detail that just wasn't present in the original. Boom, there it is we've tied in 
the color tonality. There were slight oranges and browns mixed with those blues, which might be what you're after. But for my aesthetic preference for this one, I just wanted it to be a cool blue throughout. And that's what we've done here. So let's do our slider of uh, before and after. I love doing that as well. So I'm really happy with the speed at which I was able to get this put together, guys, and make those improvements. I'm sure that I probably could have done this in 10, 20% of the time if I wasn't making a video on it and explaining it as well. So the speed improvement for me, rather than spending a few hours in Photoshop and just getting lost in all the tools, uh, which I do love doing, um, it's just not very valuable use of my time. So the fact that I was able to leverage Luminar's AI tools to more quickly realize my vision, what I discussed with you at the beginning, um, that's an absolute game changer for me. So I'm really excited by Luminar. I hope this walkthrough has helped you guys. Um, if you don't have Luminar AI yet, I've got a link below and I get a small commission if you buy it through that link. You don't pay any more, but it just helps me to keep creating content and training for free for you guys. So thank you very much for watching. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll be happy to help you guys out. So look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.